Okay, so I guess I've been on a bit of a longer hiatus than I was expecting. Not joking here, I was planning on releasing a video on The Legend of Everfree in the first week of January, but a personal emergency happened and I couldn't make videos. So I'd like to thank my viewers for sticking with me even though I hadn't said anything, and I'd like to welcome all the newcomers to my channel. Now, let's talk about Star Trek. The travellers are returning. Cease review. Did she say C-3PO? Well, Kirk then comes out of the Guardian of Forever, which oddly enough isn't a sexual euphemism. What a trip, Bones. Orion at the dawn of its civilization. Even just observing, not touching. Yes, not touching. Who's he, Jim? What do you mean, who's he? You know Mr. Spock. Right, I don't, Jim. Maybe this is after Leonard Nimoy wrote his autobiography, I Am Not Spock. They go back to the ship to see if they can get some answers. But things get even more confusing. Captain, I was expecting it to be one of the historians with you. But a Vulcan? I don't know what's going on, but the first officer of this ship will be treated with respect. Captain, I assure you no one has ever treated me otherwise. Okay, so something to obviously change the timeline so that Spock isn't the first officer. And I don't think a lousy director has anything to do with it this time. Nothing. I can't find one thing we did when we were in the Vortex that could possibly have affected the future. Is that Shaking Stevens? It seems, Captain, I'm the only one affected. But I know who you are, and no one else aboard does. While we were in Orion's past, the time revision that took place here didn't affect me. Kirk here. Eh, uh, I think you are missing a sound effect there. According to Starfleet's records, Spock didn't join Starfleet, and his parents got a divorce after their son died. Which is, of course, Spock. Or it could have been Cybok, although he had a different mother, didn't he? The son. What was his name and age when he died? Spock. Age seven. They go back to the planet, hoping something there might tell them what happened. Was the Guardian in use while we were gone? Yes, but it was nothing unusual. We were scanning recent Vulcan history. What time period? 20 to 30 Vulcan years past. Why 20 to 30 years past? Why not study the time of Surak, or when the Vulcans and Romulans parted ways? Why such recent Vulcan history? Also, where was the Temporal Agents when all this was going on? This is why Trekkies don't like Enterprise. The scientists say that they recorded Spock dying during the maturity test. The Cars 1. A survival test traditional for young males. Hang on, what if they're trans? I mean, this ritual sounds very gender specific, so if a Vulcan boy identified as female, would she still go in the Cars 1? Or if a Vulcan girl identified as male, would he go through it? That was the day my cousin saved my life in the desert when I was attacked by a wild animal. He was visiting us, but I never saw him after that. Spock, did Selig look like you do now? I believe so, Captain. And I know what you're thinking. It was I who saved myself that other time. Guardian, did you hear that? I hear it all. What's up with that voice? Okay, I've not seen the original episode. There's nothing more dangerous in this world than touching my mum's TOS box set. But I know that's not the same voice. They decide that the best way to restore the timeline is to send Spock back to save himself. Spock. What? No Kirk? But I have so many William Shatner jokes! Earther! Barbarian! Emotional Earther! You're a tyrant, Spock! You could never be a true Vulcan. You haven't even mastered a simple Vulcan neck pinch yet, Earther. While you are learning how to spell your name, I was being trained to conquer galaxies. Actually, what's going on here? I mean, bullying's not exactly logical. This is Young Spock, voiced by Zachary Quinto. Actually, I have no idea who voiced him, although this kid reads his lines like Benedict Cumberbatch. That is not true. My father, have you ever heard the son of Sarek was a liar? My name is Khan. No ship should go down without her captain. I have no strings to hold me down. I'm a real boy. My apologies, visitor. I regret you are witness to that unfortunate display of emotion on the part of my son. In the family, all is silence. This is of course Sarek, voiced by Mark Leonard. And from what I understand it, this is the only episode of the animated series he was in. And it was the only episode written by Dorothy C. Fontana. For those of you who don't know, she wrote the Enterprise incident in the original series. 
as well as episodes in TNG and DS9, and was created by Leonard Nimoy as fleshing out much of the Vulcan culture. I am journeying to the family shrine to honour our gods. You have a long way to go. Will you break your journey with us for a while, cousin? I am honoured. Come, Selick, let us sing the Vulcan national anthem. In the middle of the earth, in the land of Shire, is a brave little hobbit whom we all admire. Aye, Lord of the Rings. In a hobbit hole and everybody knows him. After that, Sarek gives young Spock a talking to about his behaviour. The time draws near when you will have to decide whether you will follow Vulcan or human philosophy. Vulcan offers much. No war, no crime, order, logic and control in place of raw emotions and instinct. Huh. So what does human offer? Hey, what does human offer? Hey! I hope you were not disturbed by my son's behavior, Selick. No, my lady Amanda. Any child has much to learn. My young cousin has a more difficult road to travel than others. Why is the camera zooming in on Spock's mum like that? I don't know if it's because this was made like 40 years ago, but there's one or two things in this episode that are a little creepy. For example, that's zooming in just now. Also, what the heck are the Vulcan kids wearing? It looks like they're all cosplaying as Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, he's still relevant, right? Personal log, star date 5373.9, subjective time. The timeline seems to have changed again. Yet I do not believe I have done anything to disrupt it. Dragons! Of course. I should have remembered. It wasn't the actual Kazwan ordeal. Spock chases after himself. And when he finds him, he's being attacked by some cat dragon lizard thing. But Super Spock flies in with a double neck pinch and renders the creature unconscious. I suggest we move away from this area before the Lamatia regains consciousness. Personal log. Something unexpected has again occurred. The Selat, Aichaya, was struck by the poisonous claws of the Lamatia he fought. He is dying, unless we can find a healer, and soon. Wait, he's not filling out his personal log. And if he did, wouldn't young Spock hear it? And probably figure out that Selak is him from the future? Well, in the meantime, young Spock goes to get a healer. Also known as a vet. Well, Spock looks after Aichaya. This did not happen before. My life decision was made without the sacrifice of yours. Sacrifice? Young Spock arrives at the healer's house. The hour is late. I trust your errand is urgent. Most urgent, healer. My Selot fought a Lamacha in the Langan foothills. And this is where the kid really struggles. I'm not going to be too hard on him because he's a kid who likely hasn't had a lot of voice acting practice, and it likely doesn't help that a lot of these words are made up as it were. But this is where you can really hear him breaking up the syllables in order to read these lines. Well, he convinces the healer to follow him up the mountain to Tentai Chaya. You made the desert crossing most efficiently. You will not disappoint Sarek in your Kazwan. I wanted only to help Aichaya. He was my father's before he was mine. To lose him... A Vulcan would face such a loss without tears. How? By understanding every life comes to an end, when time demands it. Loss of life is to be mourned, but only if the life was wasted. Aichaya's was not. I don't know, I think I prefer the Shiki philosophy on death. I think death is equally terrible for everyone. Young people, old people, the good, the bad, it's always the same. It's rather fair in its treatment. There's no such thing as a particularly terrible death, and that's why it's frightening. Your behavior and age, your personality, your wealth, beauty, your personal beliefs, all the things that add up to make us who we are, they only matter while we are alive. Death makes every last one of them null and void. So any death is terrible. What the heck is up with her hair? I regret having troubled you in any way, but it was necessary. He sounds like he just kicked his football into his neighbor's garden rather than talking to his dad. Yeah, sorry my ball smashed up your gnomes. There was a decision to be made. A direction for my life had to be chosen. I chose human. I find it very, very easy to be true. I find myself alone when each day is through. 
Yes, I'll admit that I'm a fool for you because you're mine. I walk the line. And that's yesteryear. This is actually a decent episode. The animation's a bit wonky, especially the running, but the line reading is the big problem. Like I said earlier, it isn't the kid's fault, he likely didn't have much acting practice. But I think it would have been better if they got a pre-Nancy Cartwright, Nancy Cartwright to voice young Spock. Or at least someone with acting experience who could do a boy's voice without sounding like they're reading their lines. A problem I have with the story is, although they say it's Spock's choice, his parents seem to push him towards the Vulcan way without showing him the human way. Even his mother seems to act more Vulcan. Which I'm sure was okay at the time, but in today's society it's a bit more of a red flag. Same with the way the kids are dressed. It can be seen in bad taste, but I'm sure there was nothing meant by it, it's just a cultural change over 40 years. Apart from that, as a Trek fan it's good to see some of Spock's backstory, and some character development, even though it's a young Spock learning the lesson. And I think the lesson he learns is a very good one to put aside what he wanted in doing what was best for his pet. Although one thing that was never cleared up, who really attacked Spock on that mountain? <gasps> Old man Andorian. And I'd have got away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids. <laughs> <laughs>